And hello everyone, welcome back to another Pascal tutorial. So in this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at if statements. These allows your program to make decisions. Isn't that absolutely awesome? So you can use if statements to figure out what your program should be doing. So should your program execute one part of the code or a different part of the code? It's awesome because now your program can start thinking for itself. Take that with a tablespoon of salt. Anyhow, now an if statement is very simple. If true condition, then begin and execute code. This is an if statement. So we can say if true, then you can write line and remember true and false is like yes and no. So true would be yes. So if yes, and here you can say execute code. And you can put as much code in here as you want. You're not limited to just one line. This begin and end is very similar to this begin and end. All right. And take note this end here has a semicolon, not a dot. Now here, let's execute it. And then, oh, we actually get an issue. Oh, it could be because I have that var there. Let's just remove it. Ah, there we go. So execute code, execute code, and execute code. If we were to say false, which is no, then we get nothing, just one warning issued because this will always be false, of course. So this is a very simple piece of code, but it's very powerful. So now you can decide if something should execute or not. So let's do a few conditions here. There's also another way you can do if statements and that's in one line. So if true, then right line, I am powerful. There we go. So I am powerful. This is a one liner if statement, meaning after this line, this if statement will no longer just run. So you gave me an example here. I will say right line and here we can say two. And before we can say right line one. So this is a one liner if statement, meaning it does not go to the next line. If you wanted to go to the next line, you have to use begin and end, but here it's only one line. So if we run this, we'll get one, I am powerful two. But if we say false here, it will give one, two. And of course, if we were to say begin or true and then begin and end, we can, of course, split this onto the next line. Then this will, of course, be a block quote, meaning we can have a bunch of these, but once it reaches the end, it will no longer execute. So one, I'm powerful, I'm powerful, I'm powerful. Two, if I say false, then I will get one, two. So this block code was entirely skipped. So without a begin and end, you can make it a one-liner, meaning only one line will be executed. I'm going to use this just because it uses less code and it's a little bit neater. So if we say true, it should still execute. There we go. Now, true and false on their own isn't very powerful. However, you can create values that can simulate a true and false. For example, is five larger than the value two? And you might remember this from school. This one will always try to eat the larger part because that's a mouth. Remember, so is five larger than two? Five is larger than two, so this will actually give us a true value. So this will be true. But if we were to make it like this, oh, no, 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 like this, then it will be, is five smaller than two? And that will be a false value because you're basically asking, hey, is five bigger, or in this case, is five smaller than two? No, five is not smaller than two. No, which is false. So this will not execute, but five is definitely bigger than two. So this is true. Now I'm going to jump back to a block quote again. So here we can go like this and then end. So this should still work. Yes. Now let's say you do this. So now it won't execute, but let's say you still want it to execute something else if it does, if this is false, but you only want it to execute if this value is false. Well, then we can use else. 
And here we can just put it in there, take note, no semicolon at the end here. And you can say else begin, and this end has a semicolon. Just take note of that, that confused me at first. And I can say right line value was false. Now, if we run this, we'll get value was false. But if we were to change this, so this value becomes true, we'll get I am powerful. So this will execute this or this. It will not execute both. So if this value is true, it will execute this and skip this. If this value is false, it will skip this and execute this. And again, you can also do this in one line. So we can say this, if five is bigger than two, then write something else this. And again, this is a one line thing. I'm just splitting up into multiple lines. And here there's not allowed to be a semicolon at the end. So we should just remove that. So yeah, then another way you can do it in one line. Generally, I just say use a block because if you do a one line thing, I saw a lot of people in my high school class when we did Delphi, which uses Pascal. A lot of them tried to do this one line thing. And a lot of times that's what got their marks down because they didn't want to do the effort of saying begin and end. And then they spent 10 minutes trying to figure out why this if statement doesn't work, but it's just because they try to do two things instead of just one thing. So I would actually always recommend using begin and end instead of this one liner method, which you're only allowed to execute one thing at a time. So yeah, instead of this. Cool. So I'm going to bring my begin and end back. Now you can also do multiple different checks. For example, is the name Jack the same as the name Nick? We're using an equal symbol here, not a becomes, but a single equal symbol. Run this, the value was false. Is Jack equal to Jack? I am powerful. So the value was true. You can also do this with variables. So if I say variable you name, and this is a string, then I say you name becomes Jack. And then we can test this you name against this value. You also have multiple. So if we say you name two, and you go like you name two, they can actually test you name against you name two. So you can test variables against each other as well. I'm powerful, but if we change this to Jack two, they'll no longer be the same. Take note, case actually also matters here. So if I say Jack with a lowercase j and then Jack with an uppercase a, j, we'll get a false value because casing does matter in if statements and in strings because a string with a different casing than this is actually a problem. They're not the same because these have different ASCII values and we're not going to get too deep into that. Cool. Now I'm not going to go through all of them, but just to give you a few more. So let's say we have five is equal to seven. This is going to be false. You also have five is bigger or equal to seven. This will be false, but this will check if it's at least equal to seven. So if I go like this and I say, is seven bigger than seven? No, seven is not bigger than seven. Is seven bigger or equal to seven? Yes, it is because seven is seven, but if it's also bigger, it will be true. So if I say is nine bigger or equal to seven, it will be true. And of course you can flip this. So it's less than or equal or just less than. And in this, I believe it's not. So is nine not seven? Yes, nine is not seven. Is seven seven? Yes, a seven is seven. Yes, a seven is seven. So it will throw this because is if seven is not seven, then do this. Otherwise, if seven is seven, do this. A little bit confusing, but you'll get the hang of it. I usually just, instead of doing this, I like to go equal and then say, if not nine equals seven. This makes it much easier because it's easier to read than having to do this. Now it will work the same way because if nine is not equal to seven, then execute this. But I believe you might want to do this in brackets, otherwise it will say if not nine, yes. So if you're using not, you will have to use brackets here. Brackets just allow you to split your code up into certain parts. So here, if nine is not equal to seven, then do that. If seven is not equal to seven, okay. So you, you're kind of getting the idea. I recommend you play around with this concept because it's very powerful and very useful. I'm not going to go through all of them extensively because I don't think it's necessary. Let's create two new variables. Let's say 
age, which is an int integer, and then open, which is a boolean. Then here we can say age becomes 19 and open becomes true. Now we can create an if statement where we check is our bar. So we're, let's say we're in a bar. Is our bar open? And we should just remove that not. And is the user that's trying to go into the bar older or the same age as 18? If they are, we say you may enter. Otherwise, we can say the same thing, but instead of you may enter, we can just say you may not enter. In this case, they may enter. So you may enter. But if the bar is not open, they will not be able to enter. So this and this should both result into true. You can also use or, which means either one of these has to be a true value. So we do this, you may enter because this is true, but this is false. But we say, and we say both this value and this value should return true. Otherwise it will be false. So the bar should both be open and the person who wants to go into the bar should be at least 18. Meaning if our person here is, let's make this true now, and our person is 17, which is just under the age, they may not enter. But as soon as they reach 18, which is the legal drinking age here, then you may enter. Now you can actually make it even more powerful. Let's say you want it to say something when it's not open, but you don't want it to say the same thing if your age is just underwhelming. Then here, Right before this else statement, we can actually say else if not open, then. And it's, it's like speaking English. So else if it's not open, simple as that. We then have our begin and our end. And here we can now say right line bar is closed, opens at 8 p.m. There we go. Now we do this, you may enter, but if I say if open is false, then bar is closed, open at 8 p.m. But if I say it is open, but they are not allowed to enter because they're underaged, you may not enter. You also don't need an else statement. You could just as well have done this, and this will work perfectly fine. But then if one of these two cases are not true, it will just not say anything because else will execute if both of these did not execute because they're false. Then else will execute. Cool. Now there's another more powerful thing we can do is let's say, hey, let me just go in else. Let's say here we only check their age. If their age is more or equal to 18, then we execute this. But now we can also do you are of age. And inside of this if statement, we can create another if statement. If open, then begin, end. And now here we can say, write line, you may enter. And here we can say, else, begin, and you say, write line, bar, is closed. Here we go, they're very simple. But now we have an if statement within another if statement. So now we get or oh, a compilation error because here we have a begin but we don't have an end. So now you may not enter because they're not of age. But if I were to say 19, you are of age, you may enter. But if I were to say open is false, then bar is closed. So it's going to say, hey, they are of age. And then you're going to check here. No, it's not open. So it's going to go to else and say bar is closed. And you can see here, you are of age, bar is closed. So this is called a nested if statement. You can have as many nested if statements as you want. They're there for you to use. And that's the basics of if statements. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next Pascal Tutorial.